Hi everyone, and thanks so much for joining me for this next video. Today we're going to turn a piece of maple, as you can see right here. Um, I took this over to the bandsaw, cut a blank out of it. It's been sitting on my shelf for about eight months, so it's good and dry, so we shouldn't have to go into the kiln. Um, and of course, as you can see, the bark is on this. So we're going to be turning it like this and coming around this way so we can retain this bark and have a live edge. Now, what I ended up doing is just taking my chisel and a hammer and just, you know, carving out a little flat spot there on this bark because it's all going to come out anyway and uh, you know attach my plate to it as you can see here. So let's get this thing onto the uh, lathe and start turning it. All right, so I have this completely shaped um, exactly how I want it. Uh, the next step is for me to sand this. Now, I'm not going to suffer you through that, but I am going to sand it down to 180 grit. Uh, so I'll go 80, 120, and uh, 180. 
Um, and then that, that way we'll get this ready uh, for our next step, which is putting the resin on this piece. So I'm going to do the inside and the outside, and then we'll move on to the next step. So stick around with me, and we'll keep working on this piece. All right, so I have this completely sanded down to 180 grit. Um, I have my resin here. Uh, I mixed up about 28 grams of resin, which is going to be plenty for this. Um, my little brush that we're going to be using. And we're just going to start on the inside and just start adding uh, some of this resin in here. Now, of course, this is going to darken the surface down a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, but what we're really interested in on this is for this to fill in some of those little gaps and things that, you know, we weren't able to, you know, sand out completely, and that's perfectly fine. Plus, it's going to give us a really nice surface um, that we can come back tomorrow after this dries and sand, uh, and it's gonna look really, really nice. So I think it's gonna be really good when we get done with it. Um, this maple is very beautiful. It does have a little bit of spalting in it, and uh, that adds a little bit of character to it. But this live edge is beautiful. I love turning a bowl that's got a little bit of bark or a little bit of live edge on it. And of course, maple's always a good bowl, you know, a good type of wood uh, to do that with. But at any rate, let's go ahead and continue putting this on here. And of course, this is the pith area right here. So we wanna make sure we just load this up really good. And uh, it's the end grain. So it's gonna really soak this resin up. Get this on there really good. I might have to mix up a little bit more. It looks like I'm getting getting down here pretty low. 28 ounces or 28 grams, I'm sorry, uh, is what we ended up mixing up. I think it's going to be enough. This end grain is really sucking up this resin. It's right in this area here. That's where the end grain is. And, you know, of course, anytime you add uh, any kind of resin or finish to an end grain piece uh, without any kind of sealer on it or anything like that, it's gonna really soak up that resin or that finish, whichever you're putting on. And we didn't put any sanding sealer on this. I want this resin to get as far down into this wood as possible. And we were able to use all of this resin on this. So 20, like I say, 28 grams. That's what we ended up going with. All right, so it is the next day and we are going to go ahead and start sanding the outside and inside of this, starting with 240, then we're gonna to go to 400 and then still wool. Um, basically what we're gonna do is just knock the surface of this resin off and as I'm sitting here looking at this, the resin has definitely soaked down into this wood really well. You can see how shiny it is up here on the bark. We're not going to sand that. We're going to leave it alone because when we put our satin finish on it, it will dull that down and make it look a little bit um, you know, less shining. So what we're going to do now is uh, start by putting our RZ mask on. If you don't have one of these, I recommend getting one. Um, I am not sponsored by them, but it is a fantastic mask. And I like wearing this instead of my full face shield whenever I am uh, sanding just because it's a little bit more comfortable and it's not as bulky. But I'll put a link down in the description for this, so check this kind of mask out. And of course, we're gonna be using our drill with our two inch disc on it, uh, and we'll go ahead and get started on that. First, I'm gonna hook up my uh, vacuum system so we collect all that dust or as much of it as possible, and then we'll get started. Stick around. Okay, so I'll put a link down in the description, but the dust collection that I'm using is the Rikon uh, Model 60100. It's sitting right over here. It has wheels on it and it moves around. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'll kind of bring it over here and kind of show you what it looks like. Really simple. It's got a four inch hose on it that hooks directly to the back of um, my lathe and collects all that good dust that's coming off of this. We certainly do not want to breathe this resin dust, so we're gonna use our RZ mask as we said, and we'll go ahead and get started.
This is glass smooth. It is extremely, extremely smooth. Now, what I have not done is went over it with steel wool. And rather than trying to do this when it's on, because I don't want this to be, you know, this steel wool to get ca caught in this, in this bark, I'm just going to go over it lightly with um, the steel wool by hand. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the um, 400 grit really did a great job in smoothing this out. And, of course, it's got that resin coating on it, which gives it a really, really nice finish. Now, once we get this completely, you know, sanded like this, which will just take a couple of minutes, just make sure we go over it really good. And then we'll, you know, blow it off. And then, of course, we come on the inside and do the exact same thing. And that is super smooth. I mean, we're talking glass smooth. And that's what we want. So let's take a little bit of denatured alcohol and go ahead and just go over this surface and clean off any dust that might be there. We'll just start here on the inside. Really super smooth. And you can see here, we pretty much got all the dust off of it. There might be just a little bit on it, but it ain't, there's not much. And this maple is very beautiful. Now, one of the things that I did want to point out is there were some little stress cracks, if you will, coming from the pith area. Just some very small, very minor cracks. And that resin filled those things in really well. And of course, this surface, and I don't know if you can see it or not, and I'll show it to you later on, but right in this area here where the pith is at here, and then when you flip it around, the pith would be here, there's those little stress cracks, and the resin really filled them in um, very well. So we're good there. So we're going to let this dry down, and we'll start putting some finish on. Stick around. All right, so we're going to be using the Death Clear Wood Finish Satin. You've seen me use this many, many times. Um, I love this finish, and I love um, this product. And, uh, of course, again, I'm not sponsored. I just am showing you the things that I really enjoy using. And, um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put a first initial coat on this, just a very light coat, um, just to get us started. And then we'll do our outside. And that's it. And we'll let that sit and dry uh, for 15, 20 minutes. And uh, it probably won't even take that long. And then we'll come back um, and we'll buff it. And we'll do probably two more coats and then we'll be able to take our foot off, put our coin in, and uh, we'll take a look at the finished piece. Let's stick around. Well, we got this bow completely finished and I love the Live Edge. I think it's very rich looking. It's got beautiful tone um, and it adds a lot of character to this piece. Now, the finish we did was the resin, but of course we went back with a satin finish and put on top of that, which is similar to a lot of the projects that I do. I love the finish on that. Let me bring it up and just give you a quick little once around of what this looks like. Just do a little turn here and you can see how rich that color is on that bark. And then of course how smooth everything is. Here is the interior of the piece. Very nice and smooth. It came out really nice. And of course I went with a flat bottom and here's our coin. We were able to put that in. That's always a bonus. But hey, I love it. I think it came out great. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. So please go down in the comments and please leave me a comment. That would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to hit that like button. That is going to help the channel out a whole lot. And uh, yeah, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing. We're going to have a lot of fun here in the shop. We're going to be doing some cool projects like this in the future. And I'd love to have you here for those. Stick around for the beauty shots. With that said, thank you so much for stopping by. And I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.